So are you guys ready for a good one? Because this week I've got a good one. This week I'm super stoked. I'm starting my series on how to run a skid steer. And what is this geared for? The rookie, the guy on the job site that doesn't have any idea what he's doing, or some guy sitting on his couch watching my videos, you know, like, hmm, it'd be kind of interesting to know more about these machines. This video is for you. We're gonna dive into walk arounds, we're gonna dive into the cab, we're gonna dive into the basics of grading, we're gonna go through it all. And it starts right here with this video. So basically what I've got, today's video, we're gonna walk around a skid steer, we're gonna talk about the basic parts, we're gonna talk about where shit is on the skid steer, where the dipstick is, what's that thing called, I don't know. We get into all of it right here. When I make these videos, it's really easy to forget stuff. If I forgot anything, feel free to comment below if you've got any questions. Or if you're an experienced operator watching this video, by all means, if I leave something out, comment below. And I will get to them. In the meantime, let's roll the intro. All right, guys, so we're out here in the yard, and I want to start with the skid steer because that's, uh, if you start with a small company, that's generally what you're going to start on uh, if they let you on a piece of equipment. And so we're going to take it slow. We're going to start from the bare basics. So if you already know anything about equipment, feel free to skip ahead in this series. This is for the basics beginner operator that's just trying to get into the industry. What we've got here is a Case TV 370. Uh, this is a vertical lift track skid steer. You typically will hear these called a CTL or compact track loader instead of a skid steer. Basically the reason you see that is because it's got a set of tracks on it instead of a set of wheels. What are the advantages of tracks? The biggest thing is flotation. So when you get into soft mud, you get into slick, snotty dirt, uh, this machine's gonna grab a lot better. It's gonna ride up on the mud instead of sinking down into it. What this thing does not excel at, riding on concrete or asphalt all day long, because that's gonna wear the out of those tracks a lot quicker. It's not going to excel. In fact, it's gonna do very poorly pushing snow for the exact reason that it does so well on mud, the flotation. You're spreading the ground pressure out with these tracks, and so it's not gonna be able to bite and get a grip like a wheeled machine would when you're pushing snow. Believe it or not, you don't want one of these when you push snow. So that being said, let's kind of jump into the bare basics of what's on a machine, what it involves, um, and we'll just start from the back. This is the engine compartment, and I'm gonna tell you right now, just because I know how to open this one doesn't mean I know how to open every machine on the market. Everyone is different. If you can't figure it out, ask someone. Basics that you're gonna to wanna to know on your machine. Air filter. You wanna be able to check that, clean it. Dipstick for your oil. Where the fuel is, that's diesel. Make sure you know it's diesel and not hydraulic fluid. Over here is hydraulic fluid. Again, that's just on this one. One of the checks you're gonna do in the mornings, you're gonna look at your hydraulic sight glass. This machine has it down tucked away. If you can see, there's two red lines on there. You want that hydraulic oil level between the lines. This is something if you jump in a machine and it doesn't do anything, check that guy. That's your master disconnect. So what that's gonna do, it's gonna take the batteries and completely disconnect them from the machine so that the machine will do nothing when you get into it. You will think it's got a dead battery. Check the disconnect. I'm gonna tell you right now, that disconnect right there can be anywhere on the machine. You're not necessarily gonna to need to know your filters if you're working for a big company that does their own service, but as an owner operator, absolutely know where your hydraulic oil, oil filter is, where your fuel filter is. Down here on the door of this machine is where you have your fuel water separator. What does that do? Diesel tends to attract water, and over time you will get enough water in there that it will cause you engine problems. So what we do on these machines is we put a diesel oil separator on it, and if you see at the bottom, there's this little plastic piece that has a sensor in it. That sensor is gonna tell the machine when there's water. This has a bleeder on it so that you can actually bleed the water off of your diesel fuel. Another thing you're gonna wanna know, coolant, where the fill is and where the level needs to be. That's another great thing to know on these machines. That's gonna be kind of your morning checks back here is where's your coolant level? Where's your hydraulic oil level? Engine oil level. Once you've hit all of those and you make sure your master is on, then we can actually start walking around the machine. So let's go around here to the front. Mm -hmm. 
on the front here you're going to notice we have a bolt-on cutting edge this is a smooth cutting edge uh you'll see some machines have teeth on them you'll find that in more rocky climates uh but this is a bolt-on cutting edge not all buckets have a bolt-on cutting edge the advantage of a bolt-on cutting edge you can switch it out if you don't have a bolt-on cutting edge eventually what's going to happen is this edge right here the actual edge of the bucket is going to wear down and the only way to fix it or extend the life of your bucket is to manually weld it which obviously takes a lot of time bolt-on edges you can flip and you can see that this edge right here you can actually flip it all the way around so that once this edge is worn you can start working on the back edge moving up you've got your bucket cylinders this is called the barrel this is called the piston the piston pushes out that's what drives your attachment hydraulic cylinders create their power when they're pushing so in other words when it is pulling this piston back into the barrel that is not where your power comes from the power on these cylinders comes from when it is pushing that piston out so keep that in mind because on excavators and stuff we're going to come back to this principle when you talk about where to get the most power out of the machine so skid steers have a special coupler that's this component back here we'll take the bucket off here in a minute and i'll show you that without the bucket so really quick, this is what the coupler looks like without a bucket on it. You'll see you've got the face plate here. And then uh, the biggest thing is these are your indicators for whether your pins are in the locked or unlocked position. These are the slides, the pins travel down. They will come out down through the bottom of that coupler and those will mate with the bucket. So what you can see is you have a lip right here at the top of your coupler right here, fits up under and then those pins will drive down through the holes on the bottom of the bucket. That's what secures the bucket in place. So back to the rest of the tour. This is a skid steer coupler. It is compatible across every brand of skid steer that has been made in the last, I don't know, 15 to 20 years. Cat, Case, Caterpillar, John Deere, any bucket from one of these manufacturers is going to fit on this machine because it has all been standardized over time, which is why there's so many attachment manufacturers out here for those machines now. Moving back, you've got boom arms. These are the boom arms for the machine. You can see that they go all the way to the back and that's what's going to carry the load of the bucket and the material that is in the bucket. These are auxiliary hydraulics. As everyone knows, skid steers are kind of the swiss army knives of the equipment world or of the construction industry you can slap any sort of attachment on the front of this from snow blowers to leaf collectors to geez i don't know rototillers mulching heads for forestry this is what drives those this particular machine has two sets of auxiliaries high flow and low flow we're going to get into that down the road but these are your auxiliaries this is the front electric port it is a 14 pin connector you can kind of see the pins there that is what's going to let you use your controls inside the cab to drive whatever your attachment is on the front moving around here you have your undercarriage and the track the track is pretty obvious it's the rubber part that moves around the outside this right here is your final drive. Behind there is your drive motor. That is what is physically turning the track. This part here is called the sprocket. That's actually what's gonna interface with the track and turn it. And it is very important to keep an eye on the sprocket and how rounded or sharp those teeth are because that's the indicator of when you need to switch your undercarriage out. Uh, which is a whole other topic of discussion. Towards the back here, you have your rear idler. These are your bottom rollers. And then you have your front idler up here. These are all components of the undercarriage. All of this collectively is called the undercarriage. Continuing around the machine, this is just kind of some fairing to make it look nice. Actually, the whole back of this machine has a built-in counterweight. Um, part of it is the actual steel of the machine. Part of it is the engine itself. That's all gonna help you stick down when you have a load in the bucket so that you're not tipping forward. And essentially, you've got the same things going on over here. So I hope that was helpful. My goal with this video was just to kind of get you uh, to a point that you're feeling a little more comfortable with the machine. You don't necessarily feel like you're the rookie on the job. Um, maybe it'll keep you from asking a few embarrassing questions. Um, but that being said, be comfortable asking questions. We were all there, we all had a first day on the job, we all had no idea what we were doing when it came to the equipment. So if there's anything I didn't answer, comment below, ask questions, get the information here. I'll do my best to help you out. In the meantime, smash that subscribe button. Let's keep videos like this coming, and we'll see you on the next one.